scared the fire out of me. That squirrel came out of nowhere. Anyway guys, welcome back to another vlog. I know you guys have been itching for more content and as much as I'd rather just get out here and get this all cut and get it done, I'm going to document it and show you guys exactly what I'm doing. I'm out here on Big Buck Ridge. So it's a pretty narrow ridge. It's not very uh, wide up here at the top. You're looking at the, the widest section, you're looking at 30 yards across. And the thing is, it's never been good for much of anything. There has been a lot of deer beds that I've always noticed right up here on the north end of this point. And so what I am doing is I'm coming in here, I'm improving the timber stand for one, uh, just overall timber value. So I'm going through and anything that's never going to produce any kind of value um, in lumber, I'm going ahead and eliminating it and trying to open up this canopy and bring this canopy basically down to the forest floor where the deer can have food and shelter from it. So opening up the sky a lot, trying to allow that sun to penetrate down through here. Right now I'm focusing on just going through and cutting trees. I'm not getting in here and burning this area out. It would be the kind of the one-two punch to come in here, cut all these trees down and burn off the, the fuel that's on the, the forest floor in here. But right now I'm not focusing on that. Just by simply coming in here, cutting out these trees, allowing the sunlight to come through and penetrate um, the forest floor, I can promise you we're going to get a lot more saplings growing up, some native uh, forbs and grasses, and probably just a little bit of everything that's going to really enhance the growth without even burning. Now, if I can burn it, I can guarantee I'm probably going to do that. So I'm going to kind of walk you guys through this, show you what I'm looking at as far as the timber of what I'm cutting down and what I'm leaving, and just kind of show you a little bit of everything I do here. As you can see right here, this is an area that um, we kind of had a road coming back to the back of this little area, and this road had opened up enough with a canopy above it that it's allowed some grasses to come in. So right there, there's some grasses. Sure, they didn't get um, a whole lot of sunlight, but there's something growing in here. And now that we're opening up this a lot more, I can promise you there's gonna be a lot more of that throughout this entire area. All right, so down here, this is a very north point of it. And uh, we've got a lot of just suppressed trees on this ridge top. There's not a lot of timber value on this ridge top. Um, and a lot of the trees are younger and just nothing going to, it's been suppressed for so long that it's never going to mount to anything. So I'm going through and cutting that out. You can see here I've got a white oak. Um, that white oak right there, I'm actually going to be cutting it out. There's really no timber value in it. There's, there's not going to be any uh, lumber that's going to be able to be cut out of that and it's actually dead halfway up and it's broken off and it started to rot and as you can see it's suppressed by this big white oak that's right here so you can see how it's um, up above this one's kind of leaning out trying to reach out to that sunlight so I actually need to take that one out um, got a walnut here that I actually left on the end of this point just kind of thinking at the, the long term because there's definitely going to be um, some really nice lumber that's going to be able to come out of that thing. It might be down the road quite a ways, but it's grown up nice and straight. I'm going to leave it. It doesn't really benefit the deer or anything, but I'm also looking at timber value. And if you circle around, you see that I am trying to somewhat strategically lay these trees as I'd like them to, kind of pointing more downhill and trying not to crisscross them so much that it makes it kind of harder for deer to get in and out of here. But I do really want to um, really improve the bedding here. And just by having this structure that stuff's gonna grow up in, that the deer can back up against, is gonna be great for here. There are some trees in here that I am going through and I'm hinge cutting. Uh, they're usually the smaller uh, trees in here, some of the elm, ash, cherry, dogwood, and stuff that I know that I that hinge cut really, really well, and it brings that canopy uh, right down to the ground level there. So I'm doing that also through here. It's kind of a mixture of everything. Uh, I just kind of know what I'm looking for, and like I said, I'm gonna try to walk you guys and show you guys some of these trees um, um, as I'm cutting them down and why I'm cutting them down and doing what I'm doing. So this is a pretty big mess. It's actually kind of hard to get in here and see or find where I've hinge cut. Uh, what I've got right here is actually an elm tree and it's a little elm. It's not a very big there at the base as you can tell but I really like hinge cutting elms. They're 
just kind of a hardy tree that are always going to kind of bounce back so they're really easy to hinge cut. I've laid this over right in here and this one is definitely going to green up where a lot of these trees you can see here I've knocked down. Uh, here's a suppressed white oak that was never going to mount anything. I actually cut it down at the base. Didn't really hinge cut it. It's actually going to die. And so a lot of these trees I'm getting in here and I'm killing off. But this one by hinge cutting it, it's going to create a low canopy right here. The deer really love to eat on these leaves and they're going to green up. They're one of the first to green up and they really produce a lot of forage in that area. All right, so I don't have a lot of time left. We've got a little over an hour left of daylight. So I've got to get cranking on some of this cutting. So here we go, you ready Journey? You gotta stay in there. First off, you need to excuse my dirty glasses. I wanna show you guys what I'm fixing to start on right here. And then we'll get started. What I've got is a lot of submissive trees that have just been kind of squashed out by some of these larger producing trees here. And so to take off the pressure to make these trees less stressed, the bigger white oaks and the red oaks, so they hopefully can produce uh, more acorns and uh, just grow into a much healthier tree. I'm gonna go in and cut out a lot of these. Got a lot of hickory in here, have some submissive kind of like red oaks and white oaks. Right here, if I don't trip, is a pretty good tree to take out. Uh, not a very healthy tree halfway up. You can see there's a big dead spot. It's actually died and has come back in and regenerated a top. So there's no value in here. It might produce some acorns, but I'd rather uh, these larger trees get a lot healthier and produce more than have this tree compete with them. And this tree is basically, all it's doing is taking up a large portion of the canopy. So I'm gonna get in here, cut this out, and you'll watch it really open up in this area. So. As you can look around, there's not a whole lot of really mature trees. Got a couple really good white oaks back there. Got a couple good white oaks up here. A few pretty good red oaks in here. I'm gonna lay these things down and uh, open her up. If you want a good workout, as you can tell, take a break, get out here, and uh, just get on a chainsaw for an hour or two, and it will wear you out, especially in these Ozark Hills. So, as you can tell, it's really open back behind me. I've done a pretty aggressive cut in this area, um, but that's what it's gonna take to really have this part of the property benefit me. That's one thing I really love about smaller property is you can almost micromanage it and make it just so much more potent than larger property because you're getting in there and micromanaging these small little sections. You just gotta be careful with the amount of pressure that you put in and that's why we're in here this time of year getting all this cut out. So actually it looks really, really good. If you notice, um, there was times that I was dipping down towards the ground. I wasn't actually cutting into the ground or anything, but I go through and any grapevines that I see, I cut them at the base as much as I can. When that regenerates some growth, deer absolutely love it. And plus it helps keep that grapevine out of the canopy and suppressing the tree growth and, um, you know, covering up the ground with even more shade. Uh, majority of the cedars I completely eliminate in this area because as I'm going through knocking out a lot of these bigger trees and if I were to leave these cedars they would take up that area and actually just suppress the growth substantially underneath them. Um, we did leave one big cedar back here and that's probably because I'm going to use that for some timber down the road. It's just one cedar. One cedar is not going to hurt anything but um, in this little section that I cut here 
I probably cut, you know, close to 100 little cedars, anything from the size of my fist um, down a lot smaller than that. So it looks really, really good. It looks really open. Like I said, this is, there's a lot of suppressed, uh, tight, young growth in here going through, leaving these larger trees are going to make them hopefully be a lot less stressed. It's going to open up the canopy, allow that sunlight down through here. I'd love to get in here and do a burn, but right now it looks really, really good for uh, some turkeys to roost in here. We got turkeys on this property and it was so thick, maybe they didn't fly up into some of these larger trees, but going in here, opening up this canopy and exposing a lot of these really large branches that you can see on these trees, might even get some turkeys in here roosting. And the one thing I'm so excited about is this piece right here is something that I never ever hunt. It was just sitting stagnant, not doing anything, holding very little deer on this area. The area that I've been working on here is probably about a little over a half acre. And I, like I said, I went in with a really intense cut in here and I'm going to leave this alone. I'm not going to come in here and hunt this area, but right back the top of this crest of this hill right here is the candy shop food plot the two acre food plot you guys saw us um, put together a year ago and clear that out so we got a great substantial awesome bedding area right here that i know bucks like to bed in and all they got to do is travel up that hill as a crow flies you're about 200 yards or 300 yards from there perfect area for the bucks to get away i'm so excited about this i hope you guys enjoyed this short little episode i'm going to try to throw together even more and more videos um, if you guys want me to do any specific videos comment down below what you're looking for i'll try to get those out there if you're excited about doing some more videos then comment down below but anyway give a big thumbs up and uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel got a lot more stuff coming out and until next time have a better than average day 